Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Knitting with Sam Barsky. I'm Sam Barsky. Today, well, first go to show you what I'm wearing, and I'll explain during this episode why I'm wearing it. So, here is the sweater that I'm wearing. This is the skyline of Hong Kong over here, as you can see. So, that's what I'm wearing today is the Hong Kong sweater. And what I'm working on now, right now, is the pinball machine sweater. So, as you see, here's the scoreboard that's on the back. On the front, you just see more bumpers and flippers. And I'm going to show you today some work I'm doing on the sleeve. That'll be the knitting that I'm doing. And I'm going to do some knit picking on this, which is very important in finishing up a sweater. So I'm going to get started here. This is row 43 I'm on. Each sleeve has 120 rows on it, but since the rows are shorter than on the body of the sweater, it's 240 sleeve rows combined for the two sleeves, but it's the equivalent of 145 rows on the body. Anyway, I've done about a little more than a, a quarter of that. So here's row 43 of 120 I'm about to start. And what I'm doing here is including the coin slots that you find on any kind of arcade machine. Those of you who were played real life pinball or any kind of arcade game when they were popular are familiar with that. There are still some arcade machines around. They're not as popular as they were when I was a child, but they still do it exist. The technology is alive and well. So I'm, what I'm doing, as you see, I knitted in the blue up to the white. So I'm going to switch colors to the white. So what I'm doing here is I already have the white yarn here feeding off of here. So I'm going to, the white goes under, the, across the yarn. The white goes under the blue in this case. And for those of you who are just joining, hi to everyone. So I'm going to knit the first stitch in white. Then this, I'm using purple yarn to represent the slots. I don't have this yarn. This yarn comes in many different colors, or at least it did when it was made. It's now discontinued, but I only got it in several colors. I got it in navy blue, which is the background here, in burgundy, in purple, and in white. It's and silver. So those are the five colors I was able to get it in. So I'm going to insert the needle into the white stitch here, stitch number two, and then I'm going to drape the purple yarn over here. But I want to have the purple in two different places. So I'm going to stretch it out a little. And I'll, I'm going to take like maybe 18 inches of it. It's probably more than I need, but it'll do for now. And then the next stitch it's going to be in what next few stitches are going to be in white. So until the last two, one, two, three, and then I'm going to cross the purple feeder over every two stitches to carry it this distance. So I'm going to do another two stitches and then I'm going to cross the purple once again. And then I'm going to do one more stitch and then I'm going to knit this in purple. So as you see over here, you'll see more when I turn it around to work the other way. You'll see what I'm doing with that. And then the final stitch is in white. And now I've got a purple and a white strand over here. And then I'm going to take the blue, which will be for the next stitch, cross it under both the purple and the white. And I'm going to knit the next stitch in blue. And I'm going to knit blue until the end of this row. And keeping track of the row numbers on a sleeve, on a long sleeve, is especially important. So, you know, every row, because it, uh, this is a long sleeve, it is not made in a perfect rectangular shape. It is made more like a trapezoid shape. As you can see from here, it widens as it goes up. So 44, I'm going to keep the same number of stitches like I did on 43. 
And then on stick for row 45, I'm going to increase. But first, let's do row 44. And you can see, I'll bring it up close. As you can see, there's a purple here and a purple here. I'm going to do two vertical lines out of this. And because of what I showed you carrying across and taking some of this, I am able to treat these like two separate strands of yarn. I have purple here and purple here. So it's going to be two vertical lines in purple, several stitches long. And each of them will be a coin slot representing the arcade machine. So I'm working it into rows 40 through 50. And then after I get that done, it'll mostly be blue all the way or near the top. And I'm going to change it to white when I get closer to the top. So here I'm purling it in blue, as you see. Then the next stitch will be in white. So I have a white strand here and that crosses under the blue and then I ha comes the purple so I'm going to take this purple and cross it under both the white and the blue and then I'm going to purl in white up until the next purple strand so it, it's just the same colors on top of each other so here's the other purple, purl it in purple on top of purple, and then continue on with the white. And now this is a different, as you see, I have blue on each side. I have a separate skein of blue for each one. So I'm going to cross the blue under both the white and purple, and then just purl till the end of the row. So, I have so many skeins of this blue yarn that I was able to very easily use a separate blue on each side. And it's only for these 10 rows. Once I get these 10 rows done to represent the coin slot, I, I'll just be able to do solid rows of blue all the way across till the almost the end of the sleeve until I put in a little white to match up with the white there that I'll show you about. So now I'm going to do the next row. And in this row, this is 45. Every row that's one more than a multiple of four, I add a stitch on each side for an increase up until I get my target number of stitches all the way across, which in this case is 67. So it'll be somewhere in the 80s. I'll get to 67 stitches across. But right now, I haven't reached that yet, so I'm going to first knit a stitch like normal, then I'm going to add a stitch. And the way I do that is I take the yarn, the feeder yarn, and then I make a loop out of it like that, put the loop over here, and then gently pull it. You don't want to pull it too tight, because then on the next row, you'll have trouble purling into it. But then, now I'm going to just... Knit like normal until I get to the where the coin slot is again. And then I'll do the same techniques as in previous rows. It'll be the knit stitch as usual on this side. And then So it's white. The way I do is, once again, the white goes underneath the blue. And then knit a row, take the blue and the white together. This is what I always do when I have three consecutive stitches in different colors. I take the third of those stitches in order and take it under the next two. So there's the purple stitch. So here I've got in blue, blue, white, purple. And then it'll be white up until the next purple stitch. And I can do that pretty easily. And here I can do purple, white, and then blue once again goes under both the white and purple. And then 
It's purple blue till the end of the row, but I'm going to stop one stitch short of the last once again and then add on a new stitch. So here's the second to last stitch and then here Here's once again how I add on a new stitch. So once again, just like I showed you before, I take the feeder yarn, make a loop on it. It's very easy to do that. All you do is you twist it around and there's a loop. Put it over the needle like that. Pull it gently. You don't want to pull it too tight once again because then it'll be harder to purl into it when you come back around on the next row. And then you just finally knit the last stitch and there you have it. So now this is row 46 and here you reach the stitch that we just added. So it's a little harder, but you just purl into it normally. And now each row from then on will have an extra stitch on each side going across. And this, we just do that until we reach the target number of 67 across which won't happen on this show it'll take me a much longer time to get to that point but you get the idea how to add a stitch so now you can see that the vertical lines are forming here to represent the coin slots so i'm going to do three more rows with the purple in it 46 47 and 48 this is 46 we're on and then 49 and 50 will just have white across this little section. Unless I decide I want to make it taller, there's no reason why I can't. If I think it needs to be taller, I can add another two more rows of purple and then two more rows of white after that. There's flexibility. That's one of the nice things of knitting freehand after all without an advanced pattern. You can see at that point that If you need to change the design, you can just go ahead and change it as needed. So I'll explain about the Hong Kong sweater right now, why I'm wearing that. Basically, as everyone who knows my knitting knows, every one of you knows that I like to pose in the locations of the sweaters. So, I have pictures wearing each and every one of my sweaters, either in the exact location it represents, or in something that looks similar enough. It's, it might not be the exact same thing, but it could be a replica, or just something that looks similar. Similar enough, that is. Like, for example, I, I've never worn my Egyptian pyramid sweater in Egypt. I've never even been to Egypt, even though my I married into a family that came from Egypt. But I've never been there, so I've never been able to wear my pyramid sweater in front of the real pyramids. But I did get to pose in front of the Luxor Hotel, which rep it's a replica of an Egyptian pyramid. That's in Las Vegas. As you see, I'm switching again. That's, I was able to pose in front of that wearing my Egyptian pyramid sweater. So I have something close enough for now until I get to the real place, hopefully one day. And also, I have a sweater of a particular landmark in Alaska, the Mendenhall Glacier that is in Juneau. I've been to the Mendenhall Glacier in Alaska, but the catch is I made the sweater after the fact. So there is a place about an hour from home where I live. It's called Great Falls National Park. It's in both Maryland and Virginia. And I actually found there's a waterfall there that looks kind of like the sweater. So. I took a picture wearing it there. So 
So the only sweater that I haven't done anything like that with is my Hong Kong sweater. I was in Hong Kong about five years ago, but I made the Hong Kong sweater after the fact. That was before I even had the idea of going to places and wearing sweaters and taking pictures in the location. So it didn't occur to me I should make a Hong Kong sweater before going to Hong Kong. So that left me with a dilemma. What do I do? So I, po I made a post on Facebook, which I'm sure some of my viewers have already seen. Is there a place in the United States or Canada that looks like this Hong Kong sweater with a slopey green mountain and a skyline right next to each other? Just like what the Hong Kong skyline looks like. I'll show you once again what this sweater looks like. So here's the, the sweater. So, I got a lot of interesting, re useful responses from people all over the United States and Canada. People were suggesting all different parts of, the, of both countries that could look like that. I got suggestions ranging from different places in New Jersey, which is a place I can drive to, all the way up to Vancouver, which is something I thought of as being a possibility. So... One of the suggestions I got was actually a place right here in my hometown of Baltimore. And there's a significance to that place too. It's right outside the American Visionary Arts Museum, which is the first place where I ever had a public display of my sweaters back in 2004. So one of my friends gave me a picture taken from that exact location in which the hill there, which is called Federal Hill, put together with a backdrop of the Baltimore City skyline, looks somewhat like this sweater. It's a green hill and a, sky, a city skyline. So, at my the next time I can do so, I'm planning to go down there and take a picture wearing this. And I think that will actually be very appropriate given my own personal history there, that I finish up this uh, uh, sweaters in project, in places project that I, I'm working on, right the, here in my hometown of Baltimore at the museum that once housed my own sweaters. As I, so, It, it won't be the end. It's not my final goal. I'm still planning if I get a chance to go to some of these other locations people suggested as well. Some people suggested San Francisco, some people different places in Oregon. And I think Vancouver is a great one because there is a connection between Vancouver and Hong Kong. So in all, I think these are are all good suggestions, and hopefully one day I will get back to Hong Kong to take the most genuine picture of all. I think that'll be a long time off, but it's my goal one day. But any day now, I'm going to go down to that one spot in Baltimore outside the museum and take that picture whenever I get the next chance to do so. So now I've completed what I planned out is the coin slots, and I think this is a good height after all. I don't think I need any more purple, so I'm just going to do two more rows of white, and then that'll be the end of the white section. So, this is row 49. As I mentioned earlier, being that it's one more than a multiple of four, I'm going to add another stitch. So you'll get to see that again. So I knitted stitch one just now, then I take the yarn, make a loop in it, the, the loop over here, and there's your new stitch. Don't pull it too tight because then it'll be too hard to go into it when you purl the next row. So oh, here, I don't need this purple yarn anymore. I'm going to cut it off when I get a chance. No hurry to, but removing it will prevent tangling. There isn't much of a tangling situation here anyway, but it, it's... I always like to remove a yarn that I don't need anymore in a project. 
So, as I get to the white here, I'm going to take the white and then cross it under the blue, as I've shown you before on this episode, and then knit the next stitch in white. But here's the purple that we're finished with. So, I'm going to take the purple and then cross it over the both the blue and white, and then knit this next stitch, not in purple, but this time in white. And then I can just go white all the way down to the next purple. And then I'm going to take that purple strand and also likewise cross it over on top of the white. So the white goes underneath and knit the next stitch in white. So now we're all done with purple for here. And then here's the final white stitch. Then I'm going to take the blue, go underneath both the white and purple, and then knit the rest of this row in blue till the end of the row, pretty much. Uh, as you recall, at the beginning of this row, I added on another stitch. So I'm going to do this very same at the end. So as I get to toward the end, I'm going to stop one stitch shy of it. Of the, and then I'm going to add in another stitch the same way. Take this, form a loop, put the loop on the needle like this, pull it tight but not too tight so it matches the, t the, the amount of tension of all the remaining stitches. That's what's important. And then knit the final stitch. And now since we don't need this purple anymore, it's scissor time. I have these handy scissors that are for knitting that fold up. That can be transported every, anywhere. They fit into a pocket easily. I'm going to cut this loose. But I'm going to allow make maybe five, six inches or so of a tail. And now we're done with this purple for the rest of this sleeve. Don't need any more of that. <laughs> so I'm going to put it aside. And then I'm going to purl one more row with the white and then I'm go then I'll have like many more rows of nothing but blue. It'll go real quickly. And then before I end the show, I'm going to show you some nitpicking on the body of this sweater too. So you'll get another opportunity to see the body. And then, and he, here's the final white row. So the white once again crosses under the blue. This isn't a white row actually, but just a white section, the final row in which it's being used. And then I'll do one more row on the sleeve after this. That'll be in all blue, but there's something I want to show you in it that has to do with transition from a multicolored row to a one color row. So once again, the blue here crosses under the white because we're going to use the blue now for the rest of this row. Very simple purling. And then I'll, I'll, I'll remove the the white and I'll remove the other blue. I'll show you how I do that. So this what this stitch that you purl above a stitch you just added will feel a little funny when you purl into it, but you'll do it. And he, so here's the white. I'm going to leave like maybe five six inches of that white. Here's my handy little scissors again. Cut that off. Don't need that white anymore. And there's also a second strand of blue because as you saw, I was switching here. So here, it's somewhat, here it is. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to take this, take those scissors once again, the five, six inches, cut it off and then pull this loose. We don't need this anymore, at least not on this side. I'm gonna save this for other parts of the sweater. 
I still have another sleeve to go after this. I did the ribbing on that sleeve, as you can see right here, but I still have the rest of that, 96 more rows on it. So here's row 51. We don't add a stitch because it's not a multiple of four plus one. So in this row, no adding a stitch. We're just going to trim off the rest of this yarn. So that way we don't need to nitpick it later. So here, because there are only a nine stitches across here, that's not enough to make it stable just by crossing over each time. So here I'm just going to cross it over once. Take this tail of the white, cross it over the blue, and then these nine stitches will be done with this main feeder blue yarn. And this will have to be nitpicked by hand afterwards. I'll do that at a later time. And here we've reached where the other blue was. So I'm going to take this blue tail here, cross it over the feeder blue, and then I'm going to do that for maybe 10 to 15 stitches. So each stitch, that's number two over there. Each of these t stitches, I'm taking the tail, crossing it over the blue, and then I can just cut it loose when I'm finishing this up without having to nitpick it. And then, as I mentioned before, the next 50 rows or so on here will all be in solid blue. And then I'll have to add in a little white at the top to match the white on the body, which I'm going to have to use mathematics to figure out what stitch numbers to add different white stitches into it. Now I'll take cross multiplication. Maybe on some other show in the future I'll show you how I do that. I do it every class I teach in, to people in person. So I probably have done way more than 15. I'm going to double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 17. That's way more. I don't need to cross it over anymore. I can just knit to the end of the row. And there we go. 51 rows are done on here. Put the needle cap on because I'm going to take a break from this now to show you something else. And then I'm going to end the show. So here I have a needle point needle. And I, this is, as I showed you before, here's the body of the sweater. And there's, as you see, there's a lot of yarns. I did some of the nitpicking earlier today, but I'm going to turn it inside out so you'll see what it looks like on the wrong side. I know many people have requested to see it. As you see, there's like uh, some, some of these bumpers, there's strings hanging from them. S some of them I've nitpicked already on both sides. But the important thing is that I'm going to show you is nitpicking around the net line. As you see, there's a hole over here. There's a space because this hasn't been nitpicked here. When you oh, at, at insert the circular needle around like these areas here to create new stitches, this is what can happen. And we use the nitpicking to solve that problem. So here at the top, after I finished knitting the neckline, I left like a good like two feet of yarn. That's probably more than I need, but you do want to leave a lot. So I'm going to put that on the knitting needle. And the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the inside out. You want to work from the inside of it when you do this. So I'm going to take this and insert it into a stick here. See, see how there's a space and it's uneven? So I'm going to insert it into a stitch over here and then pull it together and now it's a little more even this and then i'm going to insert it into a stitch on this side to pull it even more closer together and then i'm going to 
do that until I'm going to work my way, way on down to the bottom of one of these. I'm going to insert it into each stitch here. So when it's completed, you will see on the outside that it looks like a complete circle, just like the one I'm wearing now, this Hong Kong sweater, as you can see. You can see the yellow neckline here. That's the way to get that done. So you'll, you only want to go one stitch at a time here or else it'll pull it too tight. And then I'm go, here's the main hull. I'm going to insert it into here and I'm going to go all the way back so we can only go in one direction. I'm inserting it here. This is the space that we're trying to close up. So here I have the feeder on here. I'm going to insert it into a stitch on this side. And then insert it into a stitch on this side. So that will close up the hole. But I, I, we have a whole bunch of spaces here. We want to work on closing up. Here's another hole. So I'm first going to insert it into here to bring it over a little. You want to insert it in the opposite direction, not in a straight line, but in the opposite direction that, so as to create resistance whenever you do this. So here I'm inserting into a stitch on the opposite end, pull it tight, but I didn't pull it tight all the way. So I'm going to do that twice. And then I'm going to go back and forth, inserting it into stitches in the opposite direction. And now I'm going to work on closing up these. So I'm going to insert it into a stitch here. Keep going in the opposite direction and it will pull these tight. But since we're going to go back this way and this way, you'll get to go over it twice in order to close it up even more. So now Oh, we're almost to the end. I think that's as far as we need to go. Now we're going to go this way. So I'm going to slowly... In, you, you don't want to jump stitches here. You want to go one stitch at a time. Or else it won't look that good and you want to close every hole you possibly can so as I insert into a stitch I as I said I don't go straight through that way I go from the other side backwards and this really works if it doesn't close the hole the first time around you try going a second time sometimes you have to And then here's the next stitch to go into. I'm going to go into this one and this one. Some of these stitches are a little difficult to get into. So you have to try very hard. And then this one, this is actually the hardest of all the nitpicking to do. It's very time consuming. It can take several minutes to do this step. But here we go. Now, as you see, there's a line here. This is actually the shoulder seam over here from where we did the three needle bind off. So we're going to go under about 10 stitches of this in a row just to finish off this string because we finished this part already. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So after all that, now we can cut this off. So I'm going to take the scissors once again and 
I'm, I'm going to cut it off now. All done with that strand of yarn. And then cut this here. So now, on this side, we have the neckline closed up. I'm going to pretty much do the same. You, you do the same on the other side. The only thing is the yarn that you use for this, instead of being over here, it's over here because this is where you started it, whereas you, on the other side, you ended it over here. So all you do is you close up this hull here and then you move it down here the way I showed you and then you make sure you close up every hull finish it off over here and then go through that way so I'm going to end the show now thank you everyone who jo for joining me who watched an episode of this hope to be back next week to do another episode for you bye everyone